So there's a shot of Victoria Mill. As I say, I'm going to shoot around a bit. This is, section is mainly Bolton to Berry. So that's a separate canal, but it's all one system. Um, then Manchester to Knob End Locks will link Victoria Mill, as we can see, it's in the trees and buried in all this rubbish. So that brings me to my next point. So I'll flip it onto Daisy Field fired up. So yeah, like I say, I'm going to flip around. Not sure if we're angled right. <clears throat> and here's a bird's eye view from the top of the viaduct. And we're stood in this location down here, in location to the mill. Victoria Mill, slightly out of focus, sorry about that. So, I'll just pop that down now. I'll jump, oh, just before I go. That's Manchester Fire Training Facility, Greater Manchester's Fire Service. Train there for things like how to cut people out of a train. <laughs> so it's not a fire station as such. Right, you ready? Let's get back down. Uh, oh, oh, I'm, I'm on my feet, but like. So I'll just take the camera from the gimbal, show you what I'm on about. So we just lift, just lift it away like so. And no, I've not disappeared. I'm here. So as I said. It was an original overflow, excuse the noises and the sound. But come to the site of the old overflow if I could find it. But this is very much like Church Wharf in Bolton. If you can see very carefully, it's under here. But only there. And that's the old towpath towards Berry Wharf. Berry Wharf overflow was here. And we're next to the Irwell. The River Irwell. Over the bank there is the old stone, and that matches where I started out on this video. Where I'm saying there's um, well, demolition work, shall we say. There's demolition going on. And we're going to lose probably more of our heritage. Because our heritage isn't looked after. It's the only place I know of in the world, to be fair. Where we just don't care. So I think that over there matches up with the wharf buildings. And I've got a feeling there would have been a bridge across here, at that height, lower down, before the train, over, and now it's all in the trees. Fire station's there now. So I came in here, just look, and you can see the towpath. It goes under the arch of Daisy Field Viaduct. Not that one, that's where the river goes. But the next one along, and you can just see it through the trees, well, you can see the light appearing. And it follows this line. If I can as well. Yeah, it goes all the way along there. And I think the overflow will pop along to that now. Yeah, it's just slightly more. See all the pipe work? Yeah, and all the... There's a broken pipe. Yep, so that's not part of the canal. That would have been the original overflow, and then they fed it away. Because the original brickwork to the wharf... I'm getting tangled up in all kinds of mess here. <laughs> like I say, I'm popping about. Because this is all that's left, and we haven't looked after it, but it's still buried underneath. There's no reason why we couldn't sort it all out. So that's the wall all the way along, concrete block. 
So the original overflow still returned to the air well even closer to the weir in Burrs, like within a mile, like I said. There's your river air well. And there's our viaduct for the train. There was originally a train station here too. But the canal went through the next arch along. And you can see where it's all been showed up where they've removed it. And filled it with concrete. So an interesting thing, we know the canal's here because there's two mills in alignment there with chimneys. And this canal stayed open until like 1987. So they were still coal fired all the time. Whether they had electricity at some point, but they never upgraded because the canal supplied them. And even when the canal had been decommissioned and they weren't popular anymore, this mill was still supplied. And that's how we know to find the canal along there. And things like this in the ground. So there's water flowing out there. As usual, there's rubbish, rubbish in there. I will actually remove that. I'm not going to film myself doing it. And that's from where the bank showed up. And also where we'll see me. I'm trying to get out of all this mess. And I'm walking along. Incidentally, on Chester UK, a brief video of time. That's just the name of my channel. My name's Stephen Goddard. I investigate things from history. Most people are called historians, or amateur historians, whatever you want to call it, in the Northwest because we don't look after our stuff. <laughs> We're known as urban explorers, but that's only because everything's buried and not looked after. So we've seen examples of that all the time. So what I'm going to say is, we're going to go to Bolton as far as we've got canal with water in it. I've decided that to explain, and then we're going to do the knob end locks. So there's going to be lots of things popping up, old archive footage. I'm going to try and, you know, sample it from other videos. This is the Bolton to Bury Canal. And there's a small boy. I used to come along here with my father on the bicycle. And it, to me, it was quite an exciting world, you know, there were like coal mines and, and cotton mills and all sorts of wonderful things like inclined railways, really, really interesting stuff if you, if you like industrial archaeology. Making was the birthplace of the Industrial Revolution. And although machinery like this is now sadly decaying, for more than 200 years we led the world in harnessing the power of coal, water and steam to drive the heavy machinery that made mass production possible. But I wish I'd have seen more of it. It's only within the last 40 odd years that our great industries have disappeared. And the rivers of glowing white off molten steel flowing through the smoke. As the mines, the mills and the factories and the steel workses and the engineering works in clothes, the demolition men were dead. People didn't care about what was going on. And a few realised that, that it was all a bit tragic. And if something wasn't done about it, there'd be nothing left to show. But one of the most important parts of our history, and the machinery that had made Britain the butcher of the world, came under the wreckers armour. So as we walk on from Bolton, it'll just pop up on the screen and what I'll do is just film the actual canal with no talking and put other people's videos and stuff like that together because it's gone. And all we'll get, if we walk to Bolton, is the main road and that's it looks like this. So yeah, yeah it looked like that. And we won't be getting very much. We've got something else to say about engineering. So we're going to start at this first. It's the aqueduct. It used to go over Radcliffe Road. But when they came to demolish it in the 70s, it wouldn't go. So what we're going to do is watch 
what footage I can of it being demolished. As the two o'clock deadline approached, it was decided that the preparations would not be complete. Okay, so I am actually going to make my way over to Bolton now. We're going to get the twilight anyway, so I'm up about all over in the very end. I'm going to walk over to another lock to film that and get as far as I can, as I say, to Bolton where it's in water. Over the top of that, we'll finish the clips like we just started then. Uh, the point was I was making, they used to build things like this, like in the 1850s. And it's still there. But in the 1970s, they called themselves builders, demolition workers, whatever. The reason they couldn't walk that bridge is because it was so well made and they didn't use the right charges. It's not that the bridge was in a bad mood that day. It just shows you they wanted to just level everything and get rid of it. You go to Yorkshire and there's places where that canal is still completely intact. We just do things like that and that's what's happening. That's how you get like walls just over there, where the original bridge that this concrete thing has replaced. And I know that because the struts match Daisyfield Bridge. So you see Daisyfield Viaduct, they match this, the struts on it. So when that went in, that replaced an older wall over there from part of the canal bridge, a bridge over to the canal in the 1800s, which matches the wall through that gap. I hope you're staying with me. And then they've built this in the 1850s. But when they've replaced all this, look, they stuck a concrete thing on, which would have been a lovely bridge, I bet, originally. Um, the existing canal, as I said, we got most of what we could film. Would have overflowed into the farewell there. And if we're very lucky, we'll get some, some, of the canal left. Pretty sure of it because it went through these arches here. That looks like the canal. That's the newer structure. That's the older one at the back. Darker. But it isn't. The concrete's far too modern. But they've used the stones from the canal on the top. Look, that big one on the top's from the canal. And it's buried under here. If you were to walk along that bank, you'd probably find little artifacts. Maybe something useful for the museum, but like I say, they just throw it in. Just smash it to pieces. It's wrong, really. Like I say, this canal could be kept open, not for boats, just for wildlife, but it's in it.
an important part. Mm. It's an important part of history, you see. So, you have nice places along it, nice walks. People do come here, tourists, and you could have it as an extension of that. Anyway, we're going to flip over to Bolton, as I said. You can hear a motorbike, but they were also invented very early, <laughs> not long after trains. <laughs> so, I'll include a motorbike. <laughs> It's one of the first engine powered, it used to be gas powered and then they were petrol powered or diesel. So it's one of the first fuel powered. It's the fastest thing, faster than a train probably. Basically, it's like a miniature adventure tool. You know, like a, a, as cool as a Swiss army knife. A mobile phone does not just have to be for social media. So I can work out if my camera is straight, for example, when I'm filming. Um, I can record the screen, so this tells me if I'm level, see what I mean, you all move when your phone moves around, so if I'm filming downwards into water, that's handy, or just to make sure you're on a flat surface, and then when I'm filming upright with a gimbal, I can make sure my gimbal is all calibrated and I'm not filming one way or another, so I need them. So you see how I've got the zero. And if you get a good gimbal like mine, that always stays level as you're recording. And I've just flipped back, so I'll show you how easy these are to use. I've got a video editing tool. I've got a screen recording tool which is handy. So I'm trying a, an old school camera. It was one of my favourites back in the day. It's good at night. It also has a little light that's quite effective, if I remember rightly. So, another app that you can use is Voice Recorder. So something that records your voice, um, just so you can play it back later to remind yourself of things are dub sound. So now I am not recording this live. What we're seeing on the screen now is my voice. I'm trying to say that we want a level of 80 decibels. And when I'm out and about, it's essential to sort of get you, you can check your sound quality and things like motorbikes in the background will show up and you can turn your microphone around if you're near a waterfall, you might not hear your voice at all. So you just back away so your voice is peaking over the sounds that are ambient. And you can adjust your microphone then to get a better quality throughout. So that is an absolutely essential app, I think. So say, if you were ramble, let's say, I was about to say a compass, but this one isn't working. <laughs> Um, I'd download it just to show, you know, some, it, it's essential because you can put it in your pocket and it's with you all the time for just anything you might need. If you get lost walking along on canals like I have done in the past, thinking I know a shortcut, it, it's just it's just little tricks like this um, to make sure you're going the same way and where the sun might be going down when you're ready to film will be shining directly in your face as you're trying to end the film, things like it. it it all adds up, these are the things, and if you're a rambler, like I said, you know, you might be an old person who's like, oh, I don't like mobile phones, I don't like smartphones, but just think, you can get rid of your compass, you can get rid of your maps, you can get rid of even your whistle, it has a flashing light for emergencies, you can get apps to do that too. So, I'm just showing it's an amazing tool for vlogging, getting out and about, and I'm ready to go. Just pop that light on, see how it works. See how you can see to the bottom of the water. Right, so this is normally flowing, and this is what fills the canal. And it started to go like manky on the bottom. So they switched off the guide um, in Burrs Country Park. Go a bit slower. 
It has like an autofocus, this camera. It's really good quality, it's just old. I remember it being one of my favourites, but then you upgrade and then you think, I've gone well technical here. <laughs> and this one just works at night. It autofocuses very well. It's got a big round lens like the old fashioned days. So we just get the guy feeder that comes from the feeder reservoir which isn't flowing somehow they're managing now to sustain the water in the reservoir the water sorry look it's all um, stagnant all the stonework in there though we can get a good view of that's what it's all about like I said it's the old stone wall that's from the overflow comes down from up that overflow there and this is where once the reservoir was full this would feed water into the canal all the way to Bolton and feed all the locks along the system but it was constantly full it's good in a way because we get to see the old stonework but just look at that in there, that's terrible that's like toxic it's been allowed to go, go stagnant basically which is not right You can just tell, the ecos it's quieter than normal. Things are brown and that should be springing back into life. Redevelopment all over. Anyway, whether it's going to be restored or not, it's a heritage site, so get rid of it and fill it in properly and put whole signs up saying this was part of the canal, like I'm saying. Don't just neglect it and just say, right, we don't need that anymore. Throw your bikes in there if you want. <laughs> That's the attitude though, isn't it? So let's just see the old tunnel. Yep, it's all orange and not very nice at all. Camera, see what I mean? It picks it up really well. Bottom. When I say it's orange, you can see that is orange. Oh, look how old it is in here though. And just the tunnel. That's a pressure pipe. Yep. So what I've pushed out of that with quite a lot of force. It's got a stone wedged in there, no one really cares if it's working. And that's the old tunnel. Which the water would have just overflowed out of there at one point without the pressure pipe. We're just gonna let it go all rotten and let rats go in it. Like I said, if the reservoir is now sustaining itself, we've got another source of water to fill that for the private boats. So this is no longer necessary. But that means the canal is starved of water. So no plan has been put into place other than just some, like 18 miles worth of water. The thing is, it would only use for carrying coal. It brought cotton and timber and bricks. Even China clay, I've heard tell, all the way from Cornwall. And of course they had a packet boat, which, well they had a few, which sailed with great speed and had the right of way over all the boats, with a postillion, with a poodle. So it went, oh, get out of the way, we're coming. Yeah, that's what we're coming. I know this canal very well. Call me wife, I've played around here. And I've even sailed along it in an old maid boat made out of a sorted half bicycle wheel, three stolen slate lats and a, and a wagon chipped and, and tar around the cobblestones to stop it leaking. And some, and I've ridden my bicycle along the end of here and I can't swim, you know, all the way from here to Burnley, you know, as fast as you can go. But I have had a long and an interesting relationship with this bit of canal building. Because parts of it have been drained now, it's easy to see how well cooked the stone look is. I'm actually walking on the bed of the canal. You can see the quality of the stonework, you know, even below the water level. And they, they didn't lessen in the quality of the workmanship, you know, as they got to the bottom. Well, the real reason that I'm here is, is this over here. One terrible day in 1936, the canal bursted at this point, and all the coal boats went down the hill into the river. Terrible catastrophe. Shows us is the sheer scale of the engineering work that was involved. 
So I told you it's going rotten, it's all emptied. That's disgusting. But it is disgusting, that beautiful aqueduct. Absolutely, the Romans built it. Well, I don't think the Romans that. built it, the Romans invented that. aqueducts. And what a shame for such a beautiful aqueduct. Who invented the aqueduct? Well, the Romans did, and it's very upsetting to see it's lower. Yeah, in a state of disrepair, it's started to lower. be shut down, isn't it? Okay, bye. Bye-bye, everybody.